What's up folks, I'm back. Mike for CMCC Builds here with another optimization build, the Holy Tank. An Arcana Cleric frontliner that is a super flexible caster, an extremely sticky tank that can both dissuade enemies from attacking allies, while also dishing out solid DPR throughout its adventuring career. It also happens to be one of the most powerful builds in tier 4 with access to the best high level wizard spells, an array of some of the best low and high level healing spells, on top of a sticky tank chassis that can dish out a ton of damage to single targets, groups of enemies, and even shut down spellcasters. Friendly reminder if you want to support the channel, to subscribe and share the content, or if you want to be super awesome, vote on upcoming characters, and have access to write-ups and character sheets of all my builds, check out my Patreon link below. I think it's time. Let's check out the build. There is a version of this build that goes custom lineage, takes magic initiate, and goes straight cleric 1 through 20, but not having access to the shield spell is a major weakness for any character spending most of their time in melee, and it becomes more of an issue for characters without heavy armor, the defense fighting style, or a hit die higher than a d8. Because of that, we're going to start with the Gitsurai. This gives us psychic resilience, resistance to psychic damage, and mental discipline, which grants advantage on saving throws made to avoid or end the charmed and frightened conditions. And finally, the one we're here for, Githsurai Psionics. This provides three spells, an invisible mage hand is a nice cantrip to have that we won't have access to otherwise on this build. At third level, shield comes online, along with detect thoughts at five. Both of these spells can be cast once without a spell slot, and none of the spells require spell components. We're probably all aware of just how good the shield spell is on any character, but it's especially good on a build like this that plans to spend so much time in the mix of things. Also, let's not underestimate the value of that free casting. You're very likely to use that free casting nearly every adventuring day. For ability scores, go with an 8 strength, 14 dexterity, 15 constitution, 8 intelligence, 15 wisdom, and 10 charisma. Take a plus 2 in wisdom, bringing that to a 17, and the plus 1 in constitution giving you a very solid 16. That 17 in Wisdom allows you to take a half feat and an ASI to max out your primary stat. Which I prefer to the standard 2 plus 2 ASI because the Tasha's half feats are so good, especially on spellcasters. For equipment, you're going to want to get a half plate at some point, a shield, and a quarter staff. At level 1, start with Druid. Now if your DM is going to be a stickler about the Druids don't wear metal armor thing, that's fine. Just make sure you can get non-metal equivalents for medium armor. If your DM tells you that's unlikely, then rethink this dip and, and take Magic Initiate Druid. Otherwise, Druid gives some really nice spell options that can be changed out, the same as Cleric Spells. For skills, take whatever you like, just avoid the Arcana skill because we'll be getting that shortly. As cantrips, Shillelagh immediately makes this build sad, single attribute dependent, but at the cost of a bonus action spell, make sure you're casting Shillelagh before combat as much as possible. Anytime you suspect danger is near, auto-cast the spell every minute to make sure it's on once you roll initiative. With your other cantrip, take Thorn Whip. Force movement is always good, but Thorn Whip's force movement can only pull towards you, which limits the spell's usefulness with AoE hazards. But when your AoE hazard, Spirit Guardians, is centered on you and moves with you, that movement limitation is greatly mitigated. You want to pull enemies close to you, and they're going to want to move away. This helps to make that extremely difficult while also doing a bit of damage in the process. For level 1 spells, prepare whatever you need for that day, but on combat days, Absorb Elements, Entangle, Goodberry, and Thunder Wave make good options. Thunder Wave complements Thorn Whip by providing force movement away from you in those instances where you need to free some space or push someone into someone else's hazard. At higher levels, I'd probably stop preparing this in favor of something like Fog Cloud or one of the other healing spells, Healing Word or Cure Wounds. At level 2, now it's time to dive into the primary portion of the build and take the Arcana Divine Domain for Cleric. Here you get proficiency in the Arcana skill, which is great for making scrolls. Make scrolls. They save you spell slots. They're awesome. And you get two wizard cantrips that count as cleric cantrips. There are a lot of options here and various directions you can take this, but this is a tank build, so we want to stop enemies from moving past us and punish them for doing so and for getting close. Booming Blade does just that. And as we'll see, it's especially effective on Arcana Clerics. Green Flame Blade damages multiple enemies, and again is a particularly dangerous spell when used by Arcana Clerics. We'll see why in a bit. For Cleric Cantrips, take Guidance. 
always take guidance even if another party member has guidance it may still make sense to take it if two other party members have it at that point i'd probably look to another cantrip for the second cantrip light helps resolve the issues of having no dark vision and for the third cantrip word of radiance will eventually be a good choice but right now you need a range option and toll of the dead and the potential d12 of damage makes it the highest damage cantrip in the game for level 1 spells, Detect Magic and Magic Missile are auto-prepared. Having a ritual auto-prepared is always nice, because you don't want to waste preparation slots on situational spells. Magic Missile is a nice spell to do some auto-damage at range when you need it. For the remaining 4 level 1 preparations, take either Bless or Bane, depending on your party composition, Guiding Bolt for a ranged attack, and a minor party buff and Shield of Faith or Protection from Good and Evil, depending on what your next adventuring day will look like. If you know you're going to face Aberrations, Celestials, Elementals, Fey, Fiends, or Undead, then Protection may do more work for you than Shield of Faith. The great thing here is that at level 2, all of those 8 preparations from each class can be mixed and matched to meet your needs for that day. At Cleric 2, you get your Channel Divinity, which allows clerics to turn undead. Arcana clerics get the Arcane Abjuration Channel Divinity feature, which allows them to turn and eventually banish a Celestial Elemental Fae or Fiend. This is a very situational Channel Divinity, which would normally be an issue, but with the addition of Harness Divine Power at this level, you can now convert those Channel Divinities into extra spell slots equal to half your proficiency bonus rounded up. At Cleric 4, Character Level 5, you get your first ASI or feat, and here we want to go with Warcaster. This gives advantage on concentration checks, which is going to be massive in just one more level with Spirit Guardians, and a necessary inclusion on this build in the absence of con save proficiency. This also allows you to cast spells with both hands occupied. This build relies on a shield for defense and a quarterstaff for shillelagh, plus booming or green flame blade. Making sure you can cast somatic components of spells with both hands occupied makes on and off turn casting much easier without having to worry about dropping weapons and picking them back up with your free action, etc. And finally, Warcaster allows spellcasters to use a spell for their opportunity attacks. Guiding Bolt, Toll of the Dead are fine options, but we'll generally want to use booming blade, like almost always. If an enemy moves away from you, hit them with a booming blade attack, and again this will eventually get much more powerful for Arcana Clerics. And this should almost always trigger the spell's rider, thus adding the 2d8 damage onto the original attack damage of 2d8 plus 3 for an off turn 4d8 plus 3 damage on a hit, or 13.5 damage when to hit and crit chance is factored in. At Cleric 5, the big spell is here, but first, Turn Undead can now destroy Undead, and Arcane Abjuration can now banish a Celestial Elemental Fey or Fiend. Now with third level spell options and an additional cantrip, Word of Radiance becomes a good option that we will get a nice bump at Cleric 8. At Cleric 3, Arcana Domain gives Magic Aura and Magic Weapon as auto prep spells. Neither spell is particularly useful for this build, but they're there if you need them. At Cleric 5, Arcana Clerics get Dispel Magic and Magic Circle. It is kind of weird that all six domain spells to this point have the word magic in their name. Something tells me that's not a coincidence. For prepared spells, unprepare Shield of Faith, and with level 2 spells, prepare Aid, which can bring multiple fallen allies up with a single action. Spiritual Weapon, a concentration-free spell that gives a bonus action attack from range. And finally, Warding Bond, a concentration-free buff that basically gives an ally a ring of protection, plus one to AC and all saves. So we unprepared Shield of Faith and traded a point of AC for plus one to all saves, and it lasts six times as long, and foregoes concentration. And that's before the main clause of the spell that splits damage between that ally and you, if you both remain within 60 feet of each other. For the remaining spell preparations, make sure you have Revivify on hand, just in case, and of course, Spirit Guardians. 10 minute spell which is likely to be precast and used in multiple battles, it upcasts extraordinarily well and creates a large area of pain. It doesn't eat your action on subsequent rounds so you can use booming blade attacks or even dodge with your action making it extremely difficult for enemies to end your concentration. With that booming blade attack, enemies need to figure out if they're going to move out of range, triggering the rider damage, and even then with spirit guardians having the speed of enemies in the area which also stacks with difficult terrain, there's no guarantee that they'll be able to get out. And if they do get out, that's when Thorn Whip comes into play to bring them right back in. For any tank, they need to be able to prevent enemies from reaching your allies. This does just that, while punishing enemies that choose to move, even ranged enemies have issues, as the limit of mobility cuts down on their ability to take optimal lines of fire, and with a party that makes good use of cover and range, that can be devastating for a ranged foe. At level 7, Cleric 6, you get Spellbreaker, which allows you to end one spell on a creature when you heal them, this combos really well with spells like Mass Healing Word for a bonus action to spell magic that can hit up to 6 creatures, 
Or something like Regenerate at level 14, which gives round by round healing for over 600 hit points and the Dispel Magic effect each of those rounds with no drain on your action economy. The ability is situational, but effective when needed. At level 9, Cleric 8, the build comes fully online and the true power of the melee portion of the build falls into place. Here you get Potent Spellcasting, which adds your Wisdom modifier to the damage you deal with any Cleric cantrip. We're going to round off Wisdom at this level, so that's a plus 4 right now. But here's the thing, Booming Blade gets to apply this bonus twice, once with the initial attack and again when the Rider triggers. And Warcaster means that you can cast Booming Blade as an opportunity attack, which all but guarantees that Rider damage, doubling the Potent Spellcasting effect. To make things even worse for the enemy, you'll likely have already hit them with Booming Blade. So any willing movement triggers the Rider, then triggers the opportunity attack, and if they continue to move away, another Rider triggers. What likely ends up happening in these situations is enemies choose to stand still, and if they're standing still, they should get gobbled up by your spirit guardians, spiritual weapon, and whatever you choose to spend your action doing. At this level, you get an ASI feat, and here we should take Fey Touch to round off Wisdom. Misty Step is a solid bonus action spell that fills an area of weakness for clerics, teleportation, or movement options. With the bonus spell, take Silvery Barbs, another strong defensive spell not on the cleric spell list. So now this build has the feared level 1 spell duo of Shield and Silvery Barbs as a cleric. Not bad. If you really want more of that psionic theme with your Githserai racial choice, the telekinetic feat works really well too. Being able to pull or push enemies as well as allies when needed synergizes with AoE hazards like Spirit Guardians. Jumping to Cleric 12 and Character Level 13, you get Divine Intervention to call on your deity to intervene on your behalf. Don't expect much from this as it'll be a 10% chance now and get up to a 19% chance. It will work occasionally, but also unreliably. At 12 you get an ASI feat and this is the time to max out wisdom. That will increase the number of spell preparations, your DC, and the bonus on cantrip damage from potent spellcasting, which again, doubles that increase with Booming Blade. With the increased wisdom, both cleric and druid spell preparations increase. With druid, I would take something like Absorb Elements, Fairy Fire, Fog Cloud, Goodberry, Healing Word, and Longstrider. Spells that are either powerful or situational enough to warrant keeping and using with the first level slot. Goodberry and Healing Word are powerful healing options. Absorb Elements is near mandatory on pretty much any build, especially those without a ton of hit points. And Fairy Fire, Fog Cloud, and Longstrider are situationally useful buffs, debuffs that can help you or your party out when in need. For new cleric spells, the Arcana Domain provides Arcane Eye and Secret Chest at 4th level, and Planner Binding and Teleportation Circle at 5th level. Other than Arcane Eye, a fantastic utility spell, there are no real standouts for me here. With the additional cantrip, take whatever works for you. Spare the Dying is fine, Mending or Thaumaturgy also work. Preparations and class spells at this point should look like Bless, Command, Detect Magic, Guiding Bolt, Magic Missile at level 1, Aid, Magic Aura, Magic Weapon, Spiritual Weapon, and Warding Bond at 2. Animate Dead for your off days. Use those minions to throw out a bunch of grapples or movement block enemies by standing in their way or in front of allies to provide cover against ranged attacks. They can provide the help action to you or a big hitting ally or deliver potions to any fallen ally. Don't forget this line in the spell. Once given an order, the creature continues to follow it until its task is complete. So don't hesitate to give general commands like attack those guys or don't let them get close to us so you don't have to burn a bonus action each turn. Dispel Magic, Magic Circle, Revivify, and Spirit Guardians round out third level spells. Arcane Eye, Banishment for those times you need to take a single tough creature that you need to eliminate from combat. Death Ward, Freedom of Movement, and Secret Chest at 4. Greater Restoration, Planner Binding, Summon Celestial, those latter two will help when you need some big hitting assistance for your upcoming battles, and Teleportation Circle at 5. And with 6 level spells, Heal and Hero's Feast are always strong options. Word of Recall is another strong 6 level option. Don't forget that Heal is supercharged because of your Spellbreaker feature. Going to Cleric 16, you get another ASI feat. Since our constitution is rounded off at this point, take Lucky here. That plus 3 mod for con saves plus Warcaster for advantage on concentration checks, and now Lucky for up to 3 rerolls means concentration should be rock solid going into tier 4. Resilient Con would get a plus 6 on that roll though, so we are missing its effects but Lucky provides rerolls for instances outside of con saves and concentration checks, so its overall usefulness is broader than that of Resilient Con. And now at Cleric 17, Arcana Clerics get one of the best features in the entire game. They just straight get a 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th level spell off the best spell list in the game. You know the biggest criticism of Clerics? The fact that their high level spells lack impact, especially when compared to Wizard spells? Yeah, this just cancels that critique. Now in Tier 4, you're a crazy good tank who can just 
take the best of what a wizard has to offer and make that work. Contingency to preload healing or teleportation options when your hit points drop to a certain level, or other situational spells to counter potential debuffs and negative conditions, magic jar, mass suggestion, scatter, soul cage, or even Fizzband's platinum shield are all good to very strong options. Simulacrum with the 7th level spell, because why should wizards be the only ones able to break the game's action economy? Maze with the 8th level selection, banish a creature, but without a save. They can escape, but only with a DC 20 intelligence check, not a save, so legendary resistance does nothing, and it's a 10 minute duration rather than 1 minute. So you can clean up the remainder of combat and still have time to escape before the big bad returns. And with the 9th level spell, foresight is really good, especially on a character that's in melee, but how can you not take Wish? A cleric with Wish? Enough said. At Cleric 19, level 20, you get that final ASI feat, and I think now is the time to make sure your concentration is unbreakable. Go ahead and take Resilient Con now. That odd constitution score won't be too ugly for just one level of play. With the remaining preparations, take Conjure Celestial for more summon support, Divine Word, a bonus action, area of effect, major debuff to injured or weak enemies without a save, and instantaneous banishment effect on Celestials, Elementals, Fey, or Fiends, regardless of hit points, if they fail their save. And regenerate as the final 7th level spell for all the reasons we discussed earlier, with 8th level spells, Anti-Magic Field for the nuclear option, Earthquake for when you need a ceiling or a cave collapse, and Holy Aura for when you want to be part Paladin, but better in some way. And finally, for the 9th level preparation, take Mass Heal, which again does double duty as a 700 hit point heal, a cure of all disease, a cure for blindness and deafness, while also being a party-wide dispel magic. So there you have it, this build functions well at every level, 1 through 20. In tier 1, you're a sticky tank with an excellent AC, shield of faith, the shield spell, and can punish enemies for trying to move past you to hit squishier targets. In tier 2 and 3, you can hit like a truck on top of improving the stickiness, all while having all the healing and buffing of any other cleric. And finally at tier 4, while maintaining all of those other features, you're also a high level wizard with access to some of the best spells in the game, including the best spell in the game. This is an incredibly versatile and fun build that also happens to be incredibly powerful. In fact, it works best as a solo frontliner who gives enemies little option but to make the difficult choice of stay and hit a nearly unhittable target while soaking up damage or try and move past to get to those squishier, lighter hitting targets while taking all the damage that comes with that movement. Like the build? Hate the build? Tried the build and have thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thanks folks. See you here next time.